throttle up. I just can't believe this happened. I'm living a dream, and I represent this dream for more than 200 million of Brazilians. This is going to be just an epic, exciting, fun adventure. All right. We've heard time and time again from our astronauts morning. that they emerge from this experience inspired. They've not only made lifelong friends, but their perspective about our Earth's fragility is forever changed. Kaya, I'm an engineer at heart, and it's always been about engineering for me, but these... Aren't they going to pick up the coverage at... At 8th Central? Like, isn't that when this was supposed to start? We're, like, way ahead of schedule here. Huh. Hey, Grumpy, we got, we got a rocket launch. Let's see what happens. This is like, it started an hour before. Yeah, they said they were going to start at 8 Central. That's 9 Eastern. It's 9 Eastern. And, yeah. Oh, well, whatever. Enjoy it. So we're 17, about, about 17 minutes out from uh, this new Shepard launch. This is the NS-21 mission. It's a suborbital tourist mission, but I don't think that makes it any less cool. Uh, these guys are going to go about 350,000 feet that way, which is 
and pretty, the tower crew are departing, cool. we have some very special messages to share with you from the crew of NS-20. From astronaut George Neal, you are about to embark on an incredible journey, one that will provide you with an entirely new perspective of our breathtakingly beautiful Earth. Pay attention to what you see, what you hear, and what you feel. It's going to be an awesome experience, so sit back, relax, and enjoy every moment. From astronaut Mark Hagel, crew of NS-21, you're about to experience three things. One, the most professional and gracious group of Blue Origin Associates to assist and train you. Two, the physical aspect, a ride to space. Repeat that to yourselves, a ride to space. It excites me every time I say it. And three, the emotional impact that is indescribable of the view, our home planet, and the darkness of space. From astronaut Sharon Hagel, after today, your life will never be the same. Once you see the world from a different perspective, you have a responsibility to make the world a better place. It is an emotional experience. With that being said, as the engines ignite and you feel the thrust, have fun and enjoy the ride. Godspeed. From astronaut Marty Allen, they say in real estate, it's all about location and view. And in a few minutes, you will be in a location that few have ever been and that location comes with a million dollar view. One that you will never, ever forget. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, Beth. For your resub with the Blue Origin launch. 48 months, thanks buddy. And then Trojan with a 52 months before that. Thanks guys, yeah, I'm just uh, I am super tired, super tired. But uh, wake up after this. Uh, you guys are asking how much this this costs. I've heard quarter of a mil, which is honestly one of the cheapest ways to get above the Carmen line. It's yeah, that, so like Carmen line is about a hundred kilometers that way, sixty two miles, and that's about like that's like the universally regarded area of space. Like that's where space starts, right? Technically, it's not like there's a boundary or anything that's just kind of uh where they said all right this is where this is a this is a space enough right so this is the cheap one of the cheapest ways to get up there and do that the, the new new shepherd's a pretty good rocket it can move seven people up there uh the capsule is reusable first stage is reusable it's a uh, it's a fully reusable system which is actually pretty that's that's pretty freaking cool that is pretty impressive for what it does. Uh, New Shepard kind of mimics Alan Shepard's Mercury Redstone flight in 1961. She's going up and coming back down. Except with, you know, with that Redstone rocket, they expended the Redstone missile that Alan Shepard was riding on, right? With this, this thing comes down and it has landing legs that pop out of the side and it lands. It's actually really, really, really cool. So. Uh, the New Shepard has a B3 Hydrolox motor, hydrogen and oxygen motor in the first stage, and it can deep throttle to land. It's pretty, like I said, it's pretty freaking impressive. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, it's a lot less expensive than you might think. I mean, 250 Gs is still pretty steep. 250 Gs is still pretty freaking steep, but when you think about where you're going, and so, like, okay... This is like 250 Gs. Virgin Galactic, which doesn't fly right now, is comparable from what I understand. The next the next cheapest way to fly into space is Soyuz. And Soyuz is like... Oh, geez. I don't even know. I mean, the tickets on Soyuz were negotiated on a contractual basis. And NASA, NASA tickets got up to like, what, 70 million or something? On Crew Dragon, I think it's like 50 million or something like that. It, 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 th this is pretty much one of the one of the easiest ways that we you can get into space for the money. Like you're getting pretty good bang for your buck here. What's the difference between in space and on orbit? Well, orbit in space, this just goes up and comes right back down. Orbit means you go up and you stay up there. So a, a gigantic first stage is the difference. Two spot. This is basically just the second stage. 
I don't think Soyuz is going to sell a lot of tourist flights anymore. Yeah, something tells me you might be right. Per passenger, Orion. So we're 11 minutes out here. But yeah, like I said, they they're they're ahead on their timeline. They said they were going to start they were going to start coverage and crew was going to roll to the pad at 9 o'clock. That that's what they said in their tweets last night like have sworn that's what they said unless I can't do do math correctly which maybe maybe that's right Charlie Duke is there in mission control well that's pretty neat all right well we're coming up on 10 minutes out here Crew's already aboard, which is pretty neat. I just swore. That wasn't me. That was the, that was them. As you may see at the top I agree, of the screen, Kayla, yeah. we just entered a brief hole. So while we wait, um, we're gonna just keep looking at the rocket uh. in beautiful West Texas. That's right, Kyle. We're just waiting for all of our systems to be aligned ahead of the final go, no go poll. That'll be the final gate. I don't know, Laz. Four or five, maybe? I swear it wasn't me. This wasn't supposed to launch till much later. Yeah, they're way ahead of schedule, Shadow. But hey, whatever. Yeah, Daryl, I'm with you. I'm, I'm on another planet right now. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, Kralani, 82 month reset. Thank you. Got a few more views of New Glenn preps in the promo. Okay. Let's see. Is to go into space. And so from that childhood moment of looking up into the stars to where I am today it has always been inspired by the ability to somehow one day make it into space. So I work on the second stage of New Glenn. It's the biggest project I've ever seen. The sheer size of the amount of stuff that it can carry is very, very impressive. New Glenn is the baseline really for the road to space. It will be the thing that takes us up to orbit and beyond. I'm the senior configurator, so if the teams are having a challenge on integration, I'm the one that facilitates all of those technical resolutions of the issues. It's a very exciting team to work with. Very, very smart people. I mean, oh my god. I stay inspired by keeping the dream. Landing like and I definitely believe that within my lifetime, I will be able to travel to Discovery. space. Go at throttle up. And I want to go to hey, the moon, there he is. Mars, What's up, the Meeps? solar systems, the Kuiper belt, you name it. The sooner the better. Discovery, go at throttle up. Dragonalizer, 11 month we resub. Have cleared the hold. The countdown clock has resumed on Dude. its way to T0. We are just waiting Look at that fricker. Final Look at that go thing. Go pull. At the instruction of Damn, the Damn, man. Let's stay tuned. That is a big stage. That's the second stage, guys. That's the first I've seen in the second stage ever. I'm excited? Hell yeah. That's the first time I've seen anything with the second stage ever at all which is pretty pretty gnarly and then a guy right there is working on that's a landing leg that's one of new glenn's landing legs that's that's the test jig for it though but that's one of them that's pretty freaking cool man that's pretty cool hey chief what's going on it's gonna be big juice spot yeah that New Gun's no joke, dude. That that rocket's gonna be fantastic. 
Hey, Alucard. What do they have plans for? In space infrastructure. Yeah, Jay. Blue's goal is really more focused on working and living in space. Uh, basically, Blue Origin wants to play SimCity in space. That's what they're trying to enable. They're trying to enable ways to live in space, for people to live in space on a mass scale. Yeah, it, it's, pre it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Good stage. Well, of course it is. That was the second stage. Duh. That looked, yeah, Talon, that second stage, that second stage looked like hardware. That looked like actual high fidelity hardware, which is good. That's very good. I'm glad Blue Origin is getting back into advancing the programs after having some issues. This is the flight director on Channel awesome. 1 like and that. UHF voice for the GoPole uh, for Terminal Bingo, count Tessa. and Launch Capsule. Go. Booster. Go. Booster. Ground. Go. Safety. Go. Capcom. Go. No, Meeps, I didn't see it because the, Go. they started the coverage earlier than they said they would. First step, this is your flight director, New Shepard, is go for launch. Booster, commence the terminal count. Welcome flight. They said they were going to start 16 minutes ago. Okay, as you I loaded just up the, heard, we are a go for I loaded this up 16 minutes ago, and they were like, T-15, I would even get to see them ingress into the, into the thing. I missed all the messages and everything. I saw some footage. There was some footage of you in here. But I'm like, wait. Okay, I'd hey, love to. Uh, wait a minute. Our really starts at T minus two and a half. I've been bamboozled. Enter auto sequence, and the flight controllers become hands off. The booster does it what it can to prepare the BE three PM for ignition at T zero, followed by throttle up. Lift off occurs at T plus seven seconds, and that BE three engine habit. powers the booster up Maybe. through the atmosphere just before reaching max Q, the maximum point of aerodynamic pressure. Um, the B3 continues to work up to two minutes. It experiences Miko main engine cutoff, and then those two vehicles separate at two and a half minutes. The booster achieves apogee, and it reuses its aerodynamic surfaces and fins to steer back to the landing pad. The drag brakes deploy, the engine restarts, and we get a nice soft landing over the landing pad. Uh, meanwhile, in the capsule, our astronauts were enjoying cool, microgravity man. since it's much Sweet. slower to re-enter due to its shape. Uh, as it cuts through the atmosphere, the drogues deploy, the mains... Deploy. I heard, uh, now, I, I, Meeps, I did hear that Kat, Kat's, uh, uh, seat was, uh, contributed by a generous benefactor. That's, that's what I, that's what I heard. I didn't, I haven't seen the thing, so I don't know, but that's what I've heard. Did I hear correctly? Or benefactors? No, I didn't, Tessa. Okay. Five minute twenty. That's accurate. You and your dad went fifty fifty. That's cool, man. What? Well, drink to that, dude. Discovery. Go at throttle up. Very cool. Hey, Lev. How you doing? Thirty three month reset. That's why this one is so exciting. Well. Anytime, anytime there's a rocket launch, I ain't gonna complain, man. I'm just saying. I ain't gonna complain, dude. I get up for this, and I don't get up. I don't get up for much. I don't get up in the morning for much. Ask Brimo, she knows. <laughs> That's cool, man. All right, well, let's send it. Four minute thirty. Let's do this. Question: Hey, what's going on, buddy? That's a four year resub. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you. PJ, I'm up at 5 or 5.30 every day with no alarm clock, man. All right. Do you work 12 hours every day? Because I do. This will be my first launch that you've seen in person. That's cool, Vega. Sweet. Work? What's that? Yeah, that's what I thought. Something like that, Tessa. Yep, yep. I only sleep for 30 minutes every day. I am better. 
Three minute forty. Oh. It appears that we've just entered another brief hold, so let's stand no, by while our astronauts wait to launch to space. No, I don't work in the industry. I talk about the industry here on Twitch, so I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I don't know what that noise is. Meeps, you hear anything like that? Do you hear anything like that when you were on it? I'm gonna start Minecraft early once the launch is over. Think about it. Just exited the hole. That's the normal, I think. <laughs> okay. And I understand that all six astronauts are ready all right. to go. Let's watch and listen as New Shepard goes through its final checks. That was a quick hold. Human flight. This is in the vacuum cleaner. I. Yes. Your parents are actually a test rack watching right now. Cool. Wait, why aren't you there? Who's on board? We have uh, We're in less than 20 seconds. space flight we'll tourists entering on board. Auto sequence NASA, mode. A bunch of different people, NASA engineers. As usual, but I'm there excited. is a NASA engineer. Never gets old, uh, Eddie. There's and then there's a couple of other people. I actually missed the crew intros because Blue started like a half There's hour early, so I was, I was asleep. They're hearing it all. It's mega the made. hum of the hydraulic power unit, the battery, depression the and anxiety, clicking on and off. They've got practiced you, for this moment yeah, over no. the last few days. <laughs> I think they're ready to go to space. It's no problem. I was just depressed. It's great. I hate myself. Like, no, I got, I got you. And one astronaut for the second That's too real, man. That's <laughs> too real and too early. <laughs> they did invite me, though. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there we go. And Two minutes. CAA retract. Bridge retracting and those solar shades retracting away from the New Shepard capsule. Discovery, go at throttle up. She's wrecked. 19 months. Thanks, man. All right, here we go. T minus 90 seconds. Just about 90 seconds here, we see the aft fins, those fins at the base of the vehicle that help direct the vehicle on ascent and descent, exercising their full range of motion. I mean, you're into space 23, some existentialism is natural. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Fair. <laughs> Ship 24 lift is happening at the same time. T-minus 60 seconds. And at the bottom of your screen, the BE-3 propulsion module nozzle gimbling. This is the primary form of control for the vehicle on ascent and, of course, for landing. Wigglies. Doing a full range of checks, ensuring free range of motion. We call these rocket Pilates. Oh. Oh, that, we don't call it that at all. And those tanks are at pressure. There's variables for pressure and temperature on the cryogenic tanks in the 30 seconds. Zone. That's what they're watching the mission control. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to hand it over to Mission Control and launch this rocket. Godspeed, New Shepard. Buena suerte. T-16, guidance T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine. Stand by for main engine start. Two, one. Here we go. Tink. Here we go. All right. Whew. 
What a shot! Started liftoff at 3,700 feet above MSL. That's about how far we are above sea level out on, here in launch site one. And that BE3 engine rumble really coming through as the vehicle approaches the maximum dynamic pressure, the point where the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle are at their maximum. That BE3 engine will throttle back. There's just people on board, board, Riv. Yep. Oh, nice, Hibbit. There you go. And there we have it, Max Q. Yeah, me too, Tesla. Maximum dynamic pressure. Peak aerodynamic load. Basically, the rocket can't move the air out of the way, so it kind of starts accordioning it a little bit. Um, you don't, sitting here you don't want in, that. in West Texas right now, we can hear that BE-3 engine just roaring through the sky. You're not supposed right, to take your hands off the handle in case the escape the system goes off. I, I, I'd be holding on me. So I'm not, like, even if that wasn't a thing, I'd still be like, okay, okay, all right, all right, rockets, all right, yes, I like these. Do I like these? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd, still, I'd still be like, oh, okay, space time, I guess. <laughs> guess we're going. 80,000 feet. Here in about 30 seconds, Kaya will see the BE-3 PM engine shut off for main engine cutoff, Miko. We're T plus two minutes in. Everything's looking good here. Yeah, maybe, Tessa. Probably not. I'm, I'm having fun, but I'm also afraid. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, main engine cutoff. There it and is. And Miko, main engine cutoff. The vehicle is now coasting at over 2,000 miles per hour. Okay, we should have separation of the capsule and the booster here momentarily. Laura Stiles will cue the astronauts to unbuckle their harnesses and start floating around the capsule. Victor Vescovo, Katja Chacerreta, Hamish Harding, Jason Robinson, Victor Correa España, and Evan Dick are now in zero G. Let's listen in. Let's see Evan go again. He took the flight patch and ball out of sight. Hey, that's cool. There we go. All right. Capsules popped off. Sounds like they're getting some intermittent we comms. We just received confirmation. 351,183, that's a little bit on the lower side. 351,183 feet. So that's the capsule. We're looking at a shot like up like this. Capsule's up here, the booster's kind of just coasting with it. It looks like the booster's higher than the capsule here, but that one's, capsule's way higher. And the booster's gonna come down a lot faster now. You'll see them start to diverge. One minute warning, one minute warning. Well, Kai, it really sounded like they were having a lot of fun in that 15 cubic meter cabin. Congratulations to all six crew. They just officially became astronauts outstanding why is the speed picking up so Both fast the crew capsule and the booster are now descending as you can see on your screen uh i don't 
This doesn't seem any faster than normal. 619. I mean, gravity's pulling them back down, yeah. And we'll follow the booster first for landing. That rocket is now reaching its atmospheric pierce point, returning from space and entering the atmospheres. The control surfaces of the fins are now starting to have air pressure to push against and to navigate to over yeah, the landing. Dude, it pad. looks like they're getting near each other, but they're they're a good distance away. Watch this first stage come in. It's going to start coming in real fast. And that booster is now reaching its maximum re-entry velocity, which is just under Mach 4. The booster shape causes a lot less drag than the crew capsule, so it'll win the race back down to the ground. And we've You're got new a great to space shot stuff? there for well, yeah, the I mean, booster coming back from space dude, it's to just, our landing pad. It's just like if you took a tennis ball and you threw it up in the air, dude. It's, it's going to go up with the imparted force that you threw on it, right? But... Once that tennis ball, once gravity takes over, it's going to start coming down real quick. It'll come down with as, pretty much as much force as you threw it up. Well, well not really. It's not going to be equal, but here we go. Let's see what we got. Ooh, a little bit of vapor cone action on the, on the booster there. And you can just see that the air brakes are deploying here. It's just such a critical step in slowing the vehicle down. Velocity starts to decrease very rapidly. You can follow along on the type, top right corner booms. of your screen. And we just heard the sonic booms. Loud and clear. And he's, he's back on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Coming down for a nice stop. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's pretty cool. <laughs> And booster touchdown. Welcome back, New Shepard. Welcome back to our six astronauts. That's, that's pretty For cool. That's Blue, pretty impressive, man. I'm not going to lie. That's, that's it shows off pretty the damn impressive. <laughs> required to bring a rocket back safely home from space. Oh, my goodness. Used. <laughs> Oh, no matter man. how many times you've seen this happen, a live booster <laughs> landing onto the pad will always take your breath away. And I know that our six astronauts right now, they're sitting in their capsule yeah. enjoying the Scorched view the as it slowly bit. descends down. In the meantime, we've got quite a shot there. Right, of you see the, the thing coming like the this. capsule <laughs> re-entering. Oh, man, that looks like it's going to crash every time. And then it's just like, no, nah, I'm good. I got this. <laughs> All right, capsule's coming back down, 8,000 feet and descending. We got drogue deploy. And here are the drogues deploying now. Drogues at pilot drogues chutes. Drogues will slow the capsule down in preparation for the three main chutes. Yeah, they, they slow the capsule down basically like a brake, like an air brake, and to deploy the main chutes and unfurl them shoots. correctly. You don't want to unfurl the main chutes when you're going too fast. They'll just, they will just break off. So that's why they, they pop pilot chutes or drogue chutes to slow it down. You can see our astronauts if we look closely. While those beautiful parachutes are essential in providing a gentle touchdown for the crew capsule, New Shepard also has an innovative retro thrust system on the bottom of the capsule to make the touchdown even smoother for our astronauts flying today. And as that capsule slowly It'd descends, be one hell of a ride still there, but thrust yeah. system soon will fire moments before touchdown to slow the capsule down even further, just to one or two miles per hour. What a great shot there. Guadalupe Peak, the tallest mountain in Texas behind, of course, our three parachutes and our six astronauts in their crew capsule. West Texas is pretty. But there is nothing out there, okay, guys. Keep in mind that here in West Texas, uh, in the desert, uh, we kick up a tremendous amount of dust. Uh, but it is a very, very soft landing. Pop. 
and touchdown. Oh, the wind took Welcome that thing, huh? To Earth, new it kind of came in a little astronauts. sideways. They just went to space and they're back. That's right. Welcome back, the crew of Natural Selection. Yeah, uh, Robin, just let him, let him have it. It's fine. It's fine. All right, she's down. The capsule came in sideways. Looks like the wind took it for a second, but I mean that's not going to affect the landing too much. Very good. Yeah, did he say natural selection? So, Kaya, our team is preparing landing safety operations and the recovery of our astronauts from the crew capsule. The crew name is natural selection. Ah, uh, I got you. You know, Kaya, depending on where the crew capsule landed in the desert today can sort of dictate how long it will take our recovery crew to get out there, but they are on their way right now and hopefully we get a shot of that here shortly. That's the fun part, being in those Rivians, flying down that dirt road. It's kicking up moon dust, very similar to moon dust, um, that West Texas sand. Yeah, you're dodging cacti and mesquite bushes and just trying to get to the astronauts as quickly but as safely as possible. There's and mesquite on the moon? you trail of dust being kicked up what? right now as they're headed out to the capital. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> It's too early. <laughs> I think that's Victor with a thumbs up to us. He looks happy. you Eddie but I'm really excited to hear Evan Dick's second perspective of going up in space I know this time he wanted to spend more time looking out the window and enjoying the view that's what I'd be doing the entire time people would be like hey EJ look at this I'd be like no <laughs> no <laughs> So here shortly, Kevin Spro, Sonic our crew member seven for today's mission. Was loud, Vega. We'll That's cool. The recovery team will verify that all astronauts are giving him a thumbs up and happy, smiling faces. Yeah, and Alex. And we'll get ready to open the hatch and welcome them back to Earth. It was pretty good, Alex. Yeah, pretty good. That first stage came in real fast. Here. I'll show you. They had a really, really good drone shot. Ten, nine, Watch this. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Command engine start. Two, one. Quick. Watch this next shot, though. Yo! Dude. Look at how close that drone shot is. You gotta be kidding me. That's really close. That's pretty cool, man. Started liftoff at 3,700 feet above MSL. That's about. And here, watch. Watch the first stage come in. No, 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 no. We gotta go a little bit here. Then the crew capsule, so it'll and ring. Look, a little bit of vapor action on the first stage there. And you can just see that the air brakes are deploying here. It's just yeah, a Alex, step I remember that. Slowing the vehicle down, the velocity starts to decrease very rapidly. You can follow along on the type, top right corner of your screen, and we just heard the sonic booms. Loud and clear. And there's the BPM engine relit confirmed. Coming down for a nice soft landing. That's pretty impressive.
and booster touchdown. Welcome back, New Shepherd. Welcome. It's pretty damn impressive. All right, anyway, I'm going to get us back up to live. That's, that's pretty cool, man. I'm not going to lie. It's not easy to do. What just happened there? That's not simple. It's short. Yeah, it's a short rocket, KSP. Of course it's going to be unstable. Oh, yeah, it always does that. And there they are, crew capsule. And Got the ribs. In the same shot, arriving, as we mentioned, anxiously awaiting this reunion. You got it. So what's that's not a Rivian. Kevin Spro, crew that's not a Rivian. That's up. a damn fur. That's sure a dang fur. Fur. Yes. All right. Fur. What an action shot! That booster in the what background, was that? venting its propellants. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What was that? Something. What an. Oh, it was another drone. I want to believe. <laughs> May have been a bird or something. They're the same thing. Okay, I didn't count, but that looked like six thumbs up to me. What an incredible moment. Absolutely. Our astronauts have returned home safely and we're preparing to exit the crew capsule. That really was flawless from here. It appeared to be a safe launch and landing. Congratulations to the New Shepard operations mission team for doing it. Gary, oh, what's that memes? Gary Lee said there was a lot of back and forth trying to decide the distance from the ground to start the thrusters. They determined that having it rather close was actually much more stable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The shorter you can do that burn, the better. Memes, because you, you're using more of the atmosphere to slow down. Basically, the longer you're falling, the more you're going to slow down when you get back into the atmosphere. Just finalizing Gary's here. smart dude. Uh, looks like the stairs I are like Gary. set Gary's up, cool. so should be any moment now. And Jay, you've been, exit this crew capsule in the op I've indoctrinated you to like both SpaceX and Blue Origin now. Sorry, man. Guys, I'll get hype for anybody that's ballsy enough to launch something. To be honest, I mean, people, you know, people are going to sit here, they're going to hate and be like, "Oh, this is dumb. Yeah, whatever. As far as I'm concerned, that's more that's more dollars towards space flight. And you'd be stupid to think that that's a bad thing. I mean, I'm just going to be pretty frank there. Like this is more money towards space flight. That's that's more that's added dollars to a, an expanding imp, an expanding uh, industry. That 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 is really 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 good for spaceflight. It, it is rather it, it's a little bit on the inadvertent side. Like it, you know, will this help with NASA missions? Yeah, but maybe I don't know. But the new Glenn definitely will. And this is funding that partially. So, like, I don't understand why oh, this is a real space flight. This is a real space flight. Yeah, way to way to way to gatekeep. That's uh kind of dumb. That's a kind of dumb way of thinking about it, if you ask me. I like everyone. Anybody that's anybody that has the balls to put themselves on this thing or engineer something like this has my respect. This is not easy to do. Yeah, Alpha's got it right. The astronauts standing up, unbuckling their harnesses. So they they grounded the capsule out, guys. That's what that's what that terrifying. that's what that is. These this capsule doesn't use any toxic uh, 
uh, propulsion systems on it. It's just hyd hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and that, that part isn't even on the capsule. There is a launch escape system in there. But uh, that's that's solid. Those are solid rockets. Wouldn't you don't need to worry about those? They're inerted at this point. Yeah, apes. It is what it is. I think that's really short-sighted. I mean, it's not like it's not like they're you know they're not flying people into space like this is some kind of cheap trick or something. It, <laughs> the rocket goes up there, and w with people inside of it, that's. Not easy to do. Ask Gary. He knows. <laughs> he will tell you how difficult that actually is. It's not. It's not easy. It's right? Like that's and the dumbest stuff open. I've ever heard. That's more Welcome money towards back, space. Like, hello. I mean, there's reason I paid as much as I did. You know what? You know Let's what the crazy part is, Meeps? It's not. Newly minted it's not nearly as expensive as anything else. You, it's one of the. I was saying this before you popped in. This is one of the most cost-effective ways to get above the Carmen line, ever. There's nothing that compares in terms of price. You want to fly? Okay, so what's the next? What's the next thing that'll get you further in space? Right? It's like Dragon or Soyuz or Starliner or something, right? Yeah. Uh... You're gonna need a lot more money to fly on those than this thing, a lot more. So I mean, I, this, you know, it's not—it's comparatively not even that expensive. Hey, there's cat. All right. I'm just gonna say your estimate is not quite right. Yeah. How far out of the ballpark am I? You don't need to say. I don't want. I'm not looking for an exact number. 21 congratulations natural selection for your trip to space and back I don't know Alex maybe I don't I really care pose for pictures I know they're waiting for their families they're gonna be arriving any minute now they're gonna be getting out of their vehicles and I'm gonna see a lot of hugs in just a few moments all right oh, <laughs> whoa what was that he's just like Kevin's just like nah Yeah, right, Boxy? Yeah. Thank you, everyone, All for right, joining Mates. us today uh, for Blue Origin's fifth human... The point that I'm trying to get at, dude, is that eh, we're not talking... It, it's not 50 million to fly on this thing. I mean, even if even if it is a little bit more expensive than what, what I'm getting at, it it's not 50 million. 50 million is the next way, so that that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Crew Dragons... Crew Dragon price, Starliner, they're all 50, 60, 70 million. Soyuz, they're, they're, up, they're up there. You're not even near that. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. It's not even close. Still one of the least expensive ways to get into space. Extraordinary team, please visit our website. And if you'd like to commemorate today's launch, we have mission patches, Oops. including the one Evan Dick helped here. us design and so much more online. My name is Kaya Ehrlich, and for Eddie Safer and everybody here at Blue Origin, thank you for joining us, and until our next launch, grata and ferociter. All right, well, that's gonna do with the coverage there. Whew. It's like the dawn of commercial air travel in the 20s and 30s, when you had to be wealthy to buy a ticket for a tri-motor. Pretty much, Alpha. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Like I said, fellas, I think that knocking on people and knocking on different companies and being like, wow, you guys are stupid. Wow, this is so dumb. Wow, this is a Taurus. That's, that's, that is a crappy way to look at things. That is, that's not, that's so ridiculously short-sighted. I, I think that's just an outright stupid way of looking at it. This is more money being pumped into commercial space. Like, it's not a bad, it's not a bad thing. 
And ain't nobody gonna convince me otherwise. I haven't had coffee yet. No, I'm I'm gonna go take a nap. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to sleep. Speaking of early aviation, did you know about this magnificent thing? The Yonkers G38. Wow, that's impressive. For the time. Cool. Why doesn't the top look damaged where the parachute comes out? There's holes up there, Raven Guard, if that's what you're asking. What's up, Geeson? So, EJ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, all right. It's a blended wing with cabins inside of the leading edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool, man. Anyway. That's right, question. Yep. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the NS21 coverage. That was pretty cool. We got to see some new Glenn stuff. We'll, we can talk more about that during Space News, but I am going to go lie down for a little bit. I am very tired. <laughs> Very tired. I can't recall it see I can't recall seeing it used for anything but an amusement park ride for the ultra rich. I mean North End they were New Shepard has launched missions for NASA for suborbital tourism. Or not suborbital tourism, suborbital um, altitude testing. Yeah, it's it's run science missions for NASA. New New Shepard has. Yeah. I think I said New Glenn, sorry. Um, but, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It, it. Go look it up. They ran mission. New Shepard ran missions for NASA. In fact, NASA paid... NASA bought a, bought a bunch of seats on New Shepard, and they launched science experiments up there. It's a quick way to, quick way to do some testing in microgravity and come right back down. You started to sound like Dr. Zoidberg because you're so tired. That's right, my friends. Yeah, they tested the terrain relative navigation, Caden. Yep. The terrain relative navigation that ended up getting used on Perseverance. So, that's pretty cool. That was kind of an accurate Zoidberg. Of course it is. I'm going back to bed.